Thanks for checking in. It's Dr. Glenn, your WordPress security fanatic. Today, I'm going to address a, a slightly different kind of problem. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, how to set up your website for success. Uh, earlier today, just this morning, I got a text, one of those instant messages, came from one of the gig sites. A uh, lady said, I would like you to develop my website for me. It's a travel website. And uh, I think that her problem really is that she just didn't know where to start and she wanted security to be in mind when she did it. I couldn't take that gig because I'm overloaded, but I did want to take a quick uh, video so I could explain some of the theories. Uh, this is coming on the tail end of another gig that I just finished where I removed a very intrusive virus from a website that had permeated not only the WordPress itself but other other folders. And I think my biggest concern about that was that I had to turn the website back over to the client and it wasn't functioning when I turned it back over. So they gave me this website. Of course it's broken. It's all messed up and defaced and everything. And they said, oh please remove the the virus that's in there, but I think the c client's expectation is that I'm going to go in, I'm going to fix everything up and hand them back a website that's 100% functional and they're going to be getting orders and everything's going to be patched up. And sometimes it goes that way, but it didn't go that way this time. What happened this time was the client had themes that were paid for, plugins that were paid for, that were not updated and uh, sort of fell into a trap that I see a lot of people fall into. And uh, let's get into that right now. I'll, I'll, I'll address that uh, this very minute. So I'm gonna share my screen so you can see what I see. Uh, so let's say that you, you decide you, you're gonna buy a theme. So you go out to a site like themeforest.net and you go to buy one of these themes. Well, first of all, you need to know that when you go to a premium theme outlet, a lot of times those themes are not available in the WordPress repository. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, uh, when you are in your WordPress and you click on themes, um, you're going to see your your theme so this 2021 2022 and divi for example um, when you go to add a new theme you're going to see the the different themes pop up and th there'll be details and information that uh, are populated by the uh, WordPress community usually and you get ratings and you can sort of see what's going on you can go to wordpress.org and uh, check their resources and find this information that's your business you're you're talking about here so it's worth you know knowing what you're putting in there right however let's go back over here when you install these themes uh, I'll just for example, what happened to my client? So he went to a place like this. I think it actually was Theme Forest that he bought his theme from, but it was a while back. So he comes in here and he looks at these themes and he says, boy, you know what? I want to sell stuff. I know I'm going to be using WooCommerce. So look at this. It's responsive. It's a WooCommerce theme. Let's get into it. So he buys the theme. I'm, I'm just using this one as an example. Uh, what do you get with these? Well, you get a license. It's, it's 60 bucks to use the theme to begin with uh, a lot of times these themes will have lifetime updates and then sometimes they'll offer support so this one gives you support for six months and then you have to pay extra it's very typical if you want support later on and the themes do a whole bunch of stuff that brand new uh, users don't understand and if you were to click on the preview and you look and you think, boy, that's neat. Look at that slider right there. And uh, there's there's little animated things happening. And uh, once you've been around for a while, you'll know there's nothing special here. But um, yeah, people see it, they like it, so they buy it, okay? And that's fine, it's certainly their prerogative. But what happens with a lot of these themes is that either the theme just goes away they stop updating it and the client keeps using it because that's what they have and they don't want to completely redesign their site so they're going to use it and for as long as they can um, or what 
happened to my client recently was that the, the theme was still being updated. So he, you know, he thought everything's doing great. But what happened was when he, when he installed the theme to use on his site, it said that the theme was prepackaged with some plugins that were necessary. So as soon as he installed it, these pop-ups said, you have to activate these plugins, you know, and so he went and he, and he activated them. So now he's got, he has a paid plugin or a paid theme. He has to pay extra every year or, or every so often if he wants any kind of support from the uh, person. Now, remember, we're talking about a casual user here, so they're, they might need that support from time to time. And a whole bunch of themes that came prepackaged with it. What a value. However, uh, later on, those plugins don't work anymore. Uh, a lot of them get abandoned and the ones that aren't abandoned oftentimes will uh, become uh, paid plugins. So now to, not only does he have to pay for upkeep on the theme, but he has to pay for premium plugins if he wants the theme to work. And before you know it, uh, he's shelling out an extra 200 to $400 every single year to use one of these budget friendly themes and that's that's just not right and so uh, as a remedy to that I want to talk a little bit about what I recommended to this one client and uh, let me share my screen over here um, so the client the the theme that he had came with the, the slider and everything and uh, after I fixed the website, if you activated the slider plugin, the website would crash because everything was so out of date and, and the like. Some themes just have all that stuff in it. Uh, there's a theme that I really like by Elegant Themes. It's, it's called Divi. A lot of people also like um, some other website builder, all-in-one sort of themes. This is the one that kind of changed my life. Uh, a lot of websites that I've I've built for people use this particular theme it has the sliders it has the parallax effects it has all kinds of neat things all built into it you don't have to have a bunch of plugins that you buy separately it's all included as far as the pricing goes on this um, i just bought the lifetime one-time deal and so I, I can just be done. I can put it on all of my websites. I can use it over and over again. Uh, there's an $89 a year fee. I'm just here to tell you if I'm going to build a brand new website, I'm probably going to use something like this. And there's a couple of other ones too uh, you might have heard of that do this kind of thing. Divi is excellent. The, I've been, uh, I think I bought my lifetime license back in 2016 for this theme, and they've updated and updated and updated. So it's not going away. Super popular, good group of people. Um, no, I'm not being paid to promote this. I'm not going to post an affiliate link or anything. This is just good information from one uh, person that wants to help other people out. It's a it's a good way to go. It take a it, is, it doesn't take any longer to learn than anything else, and you can just do everything with it. It's just amazing. Well, but what about the responsive WooCommerce? Well, it's certainly responsive, and WooCommerce is just as simple as going and downloading it so you go to the plugins for your website um, you go to search and let me just move this stuff out of my way you can't see it on your screen but okay add new plugin sorry we'll just start with woo and there it is, WooCommerce. All you have to do is just click install, and it just works. And the, the other thing that I find is that a lot of people will install a bunch of plugins when a couple will do. Uh, for example, they're installing Jetpack. Uh, it's a it's an okay thing. Uh, and then they install uh, W3, and then they install other ones that do the same thing. And lo and behold, their web host actually has a cache in, in, in it, and so they didn't need it. And they just keep adding and adding and adding. There's other videos that I have on my channel all about why you should not do that. Um, you really only want a few plugins running, the things that you can absolutely not do without. So if you're searching around and you find a plugin that does one thing for you, it's not necessarily a good idea to install that plugin. 
uh, what you probably want to do is go out and find uh, a plugin or two that solve several of your needs. And yeah, believe me, there's a market out there for plugins. And there's so many free plugins that do a great job that actually paying for plugins is not very common. I have a lot of clients that have beautiful websites that rake in lots and lots of dough and they're not paying anything for their plugins because there's just so many good tools out there. That WooCommerce plugin doesn't cost anything. So I just think a couple of the things I really want you to take away from this is uh, when you're out there searching around for themes, maybe don't choose the paid themes at all. Just grab a, a, the theme that either comes with WordPress like 2021 or 2020 theme or, and they're great, by the way, they're fantastic. They're always updated. They're in the repository, so they're open to scrutiny and they will do just about everything that you need them to do or go grab the Divi theme. Uh, it is a it is a payment, but a lot of the plugins that you would have purchased, you don't have to purchase because Divi does all that. Uh, so just plug in WooCommerce and put in your text and your videos and your images and you're up and running and they keep it. They do a good job of keeping all that up. Uh, you don't ever want to get hacked. Of course, you need to have a good word fence is my suggestion. Um, firewall and keep up on the WordPress security, but start out to, to begin with. It, it amazes me how some people will shop around for their hosting. They'll shop and they'll shop and they'll say, oh, this one's $2 cheaper. Oh, well, this one's $3 cheaper. I think I'm gonna go with that. They'll, they'll try to save $3, but then they'll go and they'll buy a theme and they'll get themselves trapped in this situation where they're spending an extra $400 or $200-ish. I mean, let's be realistic every year on a bunch of plugins and stuff that were uh, requirements that just they just keep having to pay for all of this garbage uh, to keep their website going when they could have just avoided all of that with a little bit of forethought if you put the same amount of forethought into choosing the theme and a couple of good plugins uh, off the top you can avoid a lot of fees later on and you can afford quality hosting that includes Lightspeed web server and uh, cloud Linux instead of Linux and a one account in every hosting account without doubling them up and causing more risk for yourself. All of these excellent security choices. Okay, so basically that's it. Uh, use good plugins, use good themes, try to avoid paying. Of course, we all want to avoid paying, but uh, unless you can afford it, if you can afford to buy the themes and to hire people to do your website and have a professional developer that does things all the time and money doesn't mean anything to you, then go that way. But if, if money does mean something to you, then do it the right way off the top and you'll save yourself money on the back end and your website will be safer.